Willie D. Live. You, that's that's beautiful. You, you mentioned pro life. Uh, well, you actually you mentioned pro black. You said that the Republican Party is is pro life, but they're not pro pro black. How do you convey to Americans that being pro black is actually being pro American? Well, I don't think it's it's for all Americans to understand our fight because they have they can't understand our our struggle. They don't know where we come from and I guess I just learned that being able to work on the other side and look at different perspectives. Like for instance, I was a Republican and rolling with Trump them during the time that we were experiencing Black Lives Matter. And what they're saying to me is, Angela, how can Black Lives Matter when y'all the first ones in line at the abortion clinic, right? Because Black mm. life begins in the womb. So I just started to understand and analyze their perspectives. And I'm not saying that all of them are actually wrong because we have to value us first before we can demand that anybody else values us. But I didn't put a demand on them to value Black life. I, that was my thing, right? I just wanted the support because my thing is don't use us for talking points, right? It, it's good for you all to get up and talk about how many black women having abortions, how many black babies are being aborted. Okay, that's fine. But what are we going to do about it? And that was the issue for me, that everybody wanted to talk about it and nobody wanted to do anything about it. And when I stepped out to do something about it, our first location was completely burned to the ground across the street from Warnock's church. And I I begged for help. Like, I reached out to all of my top Republican friends. My godmother did, and nobody had any interest to help us. And then I realized, I said, you know, I watched you guys raise $2.5 million for Kyle Rittenhouse in one day for ending life. Even though he was in the right, but they raised $2.5 million for Kyle Rittenhouse ending life. And here I am over here saving life. And our GoFundMe raised $18,000. And with that $18,000, I was able to go get a home. And I was able to start this project. And it's like Bobby came by. I got stuck in this political fight. You know, people that were supporting us, when Bobby came by, they were upset that he came by and withdrew their support and kind of just left me holding the bag. And it just made me realize that people aren't really pro-life, they're pro-party. Because right. we get caught up mm -hmm. in the fight of politics and forget about the people that actually need the help. And helping women and children should, shouldn't even be political. It should just be the right thing to do. Yep. Well, yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and speaking on uh, people that talk about uh, how can you be, you know, how can black lives matter when... Black people are the first ones in line for abortion. How can black lives matter when you have this black people killing each other? Yeah. Well, two things can be true at the same time. Yeah. They act like it can't when it involves us. Everybody else gets it. Like, yeah. everybody else knows that you got good and you got bad in every yeah. single group. We yeah. know that. We know that. But when it comes to black folks, it just seems like some people like to, to just uh, make— believe that we're some type of monolith, yeah. which we're not. Yeah. You know, 43% of Americans identify as independents now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, how good do you think your chances are at actually winning? Because in the past, in the independent party, let's, let's keep it real, mm -hmm. was kind of like a joke. It was like, mm -hmm. yo, we're just going to run, they just data run interference. Yep. Now, with 43% of Americans identifying as independents. I think it might be. What do you even think your chances are? It I could be higher think, than I think that, it's right? It's higher than that because, yeah. you know, she just left the Republican Party. I just left the Democratic Party in a very public way. I mean both of us left yes. our parties in a very, very public way. I think there's a lot more of us that are doing that in this election in particular. Um, you know, we just had this great panel here thanks to Angela and and there's a gentleman on the panel um, you know, saying, pointing out that both parties seem like the party for the elites now. It used to be that the Republican Party, we'd think, was the party of the elites, and the Dem Democrat Party was the party for the people and the party for compassion. But that's not what I've seen over the last. And, and what I've eight seen, years. and what I've seen is, and because you know, I do a lot of work in the community, 
And there was a time when I would be faced with a lot of resistance when I talk about bringing certain political people to our community to have conversations or whatever. And in this independent space, I see that people in our community are much more open and much more willing to listen. And from my personal experience, I kind of enjoy being able to sit at the table with people that don't all have the same ideas with me, you know, because we are diverse. America is diverse. And I, and that's what America is about. All of us coming together, whether we agree or not on everything. But the one thing that we do agree on is we all want what's best for our country. And America should represent all of us, not just one particular group. And I think that's why the independent party is going to win this particular election.